How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and I'm a second year medical student studying in Canada. Now, these days, one of the most common questions that I've been getting asked by students is which pre-med program is best if I eventually want to get into medical school? And as a matter of fact, I've been asked this question so many times lately that I've actually developed a standardized response, which is that I strongly believe that you could get into medical school from any undergrad program. Now, the reason why I say this is because if you look at my medical school class list, out of 205 students, we have students that have come from all different types of educational backgrounds, from psychology to nursing, to some of the more traditional backgrounds. Now, on the other hand, though, I also do not believe that all undergrad programs are created equally when it comes to being successful eventually at applying to medical school. So what we're going to be doing today is ranking a whole bunch of different undergrad programs in terms of which ones are going to give you the best chance of eventually getting into medical school. Now, it's just after 12 o'clock on a Friday night. So tell you guys what, if this video was able to help you out, or if you just respect the whole medical school YouTube grind and staying up late to get these videos out, feel free to smash that like button and then let's get started. So first things first, we gotta lay down the ground rules in terms of how I'm assigning these different rankings to the different programs. And there's four different things that I'm going to be evaluating the programs on. The first one is gonna be just how attainable a good GPA is in that program. The second thing is gonna be how well the program prepares you for the MCAT test. The third thing is gonna be how easy it is to pursue extracurricular activities while you're in your undergrad. And then finally, the last thing is gonna be how well the program prepares you for medical school eventually. Oh, and one more quick thing, as you could see, from our tier list we're only going to have s tier a tier b tier c tier and then and then f tier because everyone knows that anything less than a c when you're a pre-med is basically an f anyways and i'm only half joking about that now, the first two programs that we're gonna look at are the math and physics programs. And unfortunately, these are gonna be some of the worst programs, at least in my opinion, when it comes to being a pre-med student. Now, there's a few reasons why. The first one being is because these aren't necessarily some of the easiest programs to get a good GPA on. The second reason why is because when it comes to the MCAT, out of the four different sections, these programs are only gonna prepare you for at most one of the sections. But I guess if you can make it through an entire physics undergrad, then that one section of the MCAT is gonna be no big deal for you at all. You're also not gonna be able to do many extracurricular activities, at least when I was talking to some of my friends that were in strictly physics programs, it seems like a lot of your time is preoccupied with getting the work done or doing some research if you get involved into things like that. And then finally, I could effectively say that since starting here in medical school, we really haven't done much with strictly calculus or physics. The kinematics equations haven't come up at all. And for that reason, we're gonna go ahead and put the math programs in F tier. The next program that we're going to look at is the chemistry program. This one's going to do a little bit better than math and physics, at least for most of the different chemistry sections. The good thing about a basic general chemistry program is that most of the time, a lot of the students are going to do like a general biology course in the beginning and also a general physics course. All of these courses are really going to help you to prepare for a few of the sections on the MCAT. Now getting a good GPA in any of the different chemistry programs isn't necessarily gonna be the easiest thing, but it's also not the hardest thing either. And objectively speaking, after having taken different chemistry courses, physics courses, math courses, and bio courses, the chemistry ones weren't the easiest, but they also weren't the hardest. One of the great things about a chemistry program though is that a lot of times these students end up getting involved in research that is often very applicable to a medical school application. And then finally, we actually have used a decent amount of chemistry, it's shown up a few times here in medical school. So some of the stuff, at least some of the biochem or the molecular biology that sometimes shows up in chemistry programs are gonna be useful in medical school. And for that reason, we're gonna go ahead and give chemistry standard B tier. Now, the next program is gonna be nursing. And this one's a little bit tricky because I wanna say that nursing is a good pre-med program. The only problem is there really aren't many students that I've met that have gone to a nursing undergrad just so that they could get into medical school. And for those of you that actually do, there's gonna be a little bit of explaining going on at the interview as to why you chose to move away from nursing and then pursue medical school afterwards. The good thing about a nursing program and one of the things that I've seen in person is that a lot of the stuff that you do in a nursing undergrad is directly applicable to medical school. And then when you get here, a lot of it's actually review. So I think that a nursing program sets you up very well for learning the stuff that we're eventually gonna see in medical school. The bad thing though is that some of the more standard basic sciences don't often show up in certain nursing programs and then you might be at a little bit of a disadvantage for the MCAT. But then on the other other hand, you also get a lot of opportunities to volunteer and do some really cool things with nursing that you could talk about in your pre-med application. So all in all, I think nursing needs at least B tier, but because you do learn so much that is going to be 
directly applicable to medical school, I think that I want to give it B plus tier. I think nursing is definitely at least a decent option for those of you that eventually want to go to medical school. And as a plus, you might be able to have a backup or you might be able to work and make a little bit of money before you actually make it into medical school. Now, next we have the engineering undergrad. Now, no shade to the engineers, but we're going to have to give this one an F tier almost right off the bat. You guys end up taking six courses per semester just to be considered full-time students. Those aren't easy courses either. So already we're down in a few different categories when it comes to points. Also, the engineering courses aren't really going to help you much on the MCAT with the exception of the physics section of the MCAT. I actually had my little brother who's currently in an engineering undergrad look at some of the MCAT physics questions and he kind of just laughed them off because they're so easy for him. But other than that, molecular biology, chemistry, a lot of these things probably aren't explored as much for engineering undergrads. And then finally, I don't think I've ever come across any engineering concepts now that I've been here in medical school. So all in all, sorry guys, engineering, uh, great course to be in, but F tier in terms of if you eventually want to get into medical school. Let's see, what do we got next? Okay, business programs. Cool thing about business is that it's a great skill to have once you eventually make it into medical school. And I know that there's a lot of us here that are actually pretty lost when it comes to the whole business topics. We had a lecture, one of the first lectures that we ever had was explaining the concept of compound interest to us and it blew our minds in terms of how it related to our student loans. So I know that that's definitely a great skill to have, but in terms of preparing you for medical school and helping you out along the way, like having a, a business student write the MCAT test would almost be the equivalent of having me trying to write the GMAT test or the business test. But I do know a lot of my friends that have taken business programs have told me that it's not really intensive in terms of the amount of time that you're spending in school. And a lot of them have actually gotten really great GPAs in their courses. So I think all in all for business, I want to give it C tier, I think. Um, probably C plus tier because those skills are so important once you get down here. But I think, yeah, C or C plus tier is where I put a business degree. So next we're going to do the standard pre-med degrees. That's biology, biomed, um, life science degrees. These are going to be the first ones that we're going to put up in A tier. These have for the longest time set the tone for what a pre-med degree is. In my opinion, they do a great job preparing you for the MCAT test. The courses are hard, but not overly the top hard, especially for some of the biology courses. The chemistry courses are definitely harder and then the physics courses are way harder. So it's really possible to get a good mark in a lot of these courses. Also, any research that you do in any of these fields are going to be really applicable to when you actually apply to medical school. And I found that it's fairly easy for you to find some good extracurriculars. And there's also just the right amount of time for you to fit some into your schedule. This sets the base for what a pre-med degree is supposed to be definitely a tier for all of these different standard pre-med degrees. So next is computer science and right off the bat, I'm sorry, unfortunately, it's another one that gets the F tier, which is really unfortunate because we do need a lot more people that are skilled in computer science that are trying to get into medicine and uh, the medical sciences. But unfortunately, when it comes to the program layout itself, the courses are hard. These people are often very, very smart that do well in the computer sciences. But if I were to ask them about some of the stuff that shows up on the MCAT, like the Watson and Crick model for DNA, they're really not going to know because it wasn't covered in their program. And then another thing that we learn about more and more in medical school is that medicine is really uh, the business of public service. And there's not a lot of that person to person interaction in computer science as well, um, at least from what I've heard. So I'm sorry, F tier for this one too. So next we have the social sciences and also the arts. So people that uh, major in sociology or maybe major in piano studies, any of these programs here. Now, I know what a lot of you guys are thinking that maybe it's easier to get a good GPA in these programs, but say what you want about the MCAT tests or any multiple choice tests that you might see in a science program, at least there's right and wrong answers. What I found is that in a lot of these courses that require essay writing, it's often a lot harder to get a good grade than you think. And that's because the answers are subjective. Majoring in sociology will at least help you out for one or two of the sections on the MCAT test, but it won't do much for the biology and physics sections. And unfortunately, I don't believe that these programs are going to prepare you very well for medical school. So when I look at the entire thing, I do want to give sociology uh, and also some of the arts majors probably a C tier. They're not bad. They're definitely not bad. I just think that there's better options out there. Like the next undergrad program, kinesiology, for example. Now, kinesiology kin is going to be a great program, in my opinion, um, for preparing for medical school. One of the hardest things that we have to do in medical school is the whole anatomy section. And when you have an undergrad like kinesiology that's going to prepare you for four years, a lot of these students actually end up going to medical school already having a very complex understanding of the human body. And they're also the ones that end up teaching the rest of us how to do anatomy. 
from my friends that are in kinesiology programs. Their schedules aren't too hectic, the courses aren't too hard, and they've told me that there's at least decent opportunities for extracurriculars or getting involved in research in undergrad. I think the one place that kinesiology loses some points in the whole rating system is that they don't really do a lot of the basic sciences when it comes to chemistry or physics, but there are the options to take some of those things as electives from my understanding. So yeah, I think Kin's great. I want to give it probably A tier. Um, I don't know if I'd put it on the same level as some of the basic pre-med programs, but uh, we'll give it A minus. A minus, A tier. I do like kinesiology as a pre-med program. And next we have psychology. Now psychology is cool. I actually minored in psychology myself and I could say objectively that the psychology courses that I took were orders of magnitude easier than the biology and definitely a lot easier than the physics and math courses that I ended up taking. So you definitely get some points there. Some of my best friends were in psychology and their schedule was nowhere near as hectic as some of my other friends or my own schedule. And there's a whole section on the MCAT that's completely dedicated to psychology and sociology. There's also good opportunities for research and extracurriculars, especially some of the more clinically oriented stuff. I found that there's a lot of great connections that you can make in the, the faculty of psychology. They are gonna lose some points though in the basic sciences once again. There's not much exposure to physics or chem. A lot of these things that are gonna be really important for the MCAT test. And then other than doing very, very well in the brain and behavior, even neurology sections of medical school, it doesn't do much else in terms of actually getting you ready for the other things. But I do like psychology as a pre-med undergrad. It does lose a few points. I want to give it B tier. Um, maybe it deserves a little bit more credit than that. B to B plus tier, I think, for psychology. It's a good option. And finally, we have the specialty pre-med programs. That's things like the health science program offered at McMaster or the medical science program offered at Western. Now, if we look back to the original printout that I had in terms of the, the breakdown of my entire class, what we're gonna see, if you look at me specifically, I was the only one that was accepted in the biomedical science program. And that's because I was only one person coming from one school. Similarly though, health sci and med sci are also only offered at one school apiece. But what you'll see is that the amount of students that got in from those programs was about 4,800% higher than the Ryerson Biomed program. Whatever is going on in those programs, I don't actually know because I wasn't a part of it myself, but what we're seeing is that these programs specifically have amazing rates of students that end up getting accepted into medical school once everything's said and done. So I mean, all other things considered, when you have programs that are getting so many of their students actually into medical school, don't hate the player, hate the game, S tier for both of these programs, no questions asked. And I mean, I think that pretty much wraps it up, except for the God tier. There are programs where students get accepted into straight out of high school, that if you're accepted into this technically pre-med program, you end up eventually actually just getting a spot in medical school. And yes, I'm talking specifically about the Queens Q Arms program, and I'm sure there's gotta be other programs like that down in the States as well. But basically, if you're accepted into this program straight out of high school, you do need to meet a few requirements. Like I think you need to keep a GPA over a 3.5 or 3.6, something like that. You also gotta write the MCAT test. But eventually, if you're able to meet all these milestones, you are going to get into medical school. That's all there is. They put you on the track from high school directly into medical school. Now, the catch is that these programs here are super competitive. I think QArms only allows five different students per year. And these applicants are some of the most qualified people that I've ever met. I actually had the pleasure of meeting one one time. And I think that eventually this gentleman would have ended up getting into medical school anyways, but uh, they're doing way more things in high school than I ever did for sure. But if you are able to get into the QArms program or any of these accelerated tracks to medical school, and you're able to jump the line and just go from high school to guaranteed medical school acceptance god tier not even s tier not god tier instantly top of the list for sure but yeah i think that pretty much sums it up uh, we've gone over a decent amount of, of undergrad programs if you guys have any that i missed go ahead and leave them in the comment section below i'll go ahead and give you my impromptu opinion just like that but barring any exceptions this is my pre-med tier list this will now on be my de facto response in terms of which programs i believe are best if you are a pre-med eventually looking to go into medical school I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We'll see you all in the next one. Let me know what program you guys are in and what programs you're hoping on getting into in the future. Everyone take care.